become evil. To 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 keep things clean and nice, uh, you could just do this private private uh, static uh, final, which means constant integer um, choice uh, choice one. Uh, it does look a little tedious like this, but it becomes really a true uh, helper everywhere else in the code. So just use those silly names two and three, right? So at least I know that this was a user choice. So instead of, uh, so they should be initialized two and three, I guess, to make them true distinct integer choices. And so in my code, if I, you know, if I do something like this, I would use uh, a variable. Now, this would be even better, I'm just thinking loud here, if this was saying exit. Right? Or this was saying a launch, and the other one would be saying uh, primes. This is really helpful this time, right? Because if, say, the choice is exit, then here you go, the choice is exit. And so that means return. Don't do anything. So let's, so the idea here is to introduce, uh, just to introduce. Uh, a menu here. Uh, how you would construct a menu. As you can see, I went out and created some static variables. Some of them are integers, some of them are strings, and yet the third type is a scanner, because now I can use the scanner once created like this as a static variable. I can use it anywhere else in my code. It's guaranteed to be instantiated before the main method is invoked. That's the rule. That's why by the time the main method is invoked, the scanner will be already initialized and ready to go. So uh, display menu. So let's let's try this, right? So I have something running there. So I'm just going to stop it and uh, just try to run this uh, latest version that I have. And so there you go. Here's my uh, menu right here. It says compute prime numbers. Let me let me try number one. So uh, where am I? Oh, I'm just not in the right spot. You need to kind of move your cursor to this console emulator here. Say okay, how about three? Right, um, three is like get out. So that worked. And finally, today if we have time. Uh, by the way, any questions about this? I mean, suddenly it, we have more. Uh, coded elements in general, but they're not that scary, are they? Right? They're still normal variables, normal integer variables. They're highlighted in like green color here. They're static variables, and the scanner now is here as well. At the class level, we call these guys class level variables, and they're also static, so that all of our static methods can access them. And many of them are also final, meaning they're only used as name constants. They're not real variables. We're not intending to change them. We're only going to use them or compare values against them, but not change them, which makes them very safe and predictable. So finally, uh, in the remaining like official three minutes of this class, let's do this. If I wanted to analyze the result of this menu, um, I could also do. Um, I could also uh, use a switch statement, and the switch statement is similar to if else approach. The switch uh, takes a variable such as choice. Takes a variable such as choice. So I just push this code down, such as choice. And then what I can do in the body of the switch statement, I can start using case labels such as this, case one, meaning that if choice was one, or if my case was two, and so forth. There's also a default uh, label available. These are called 
case labels and default label inside the switch statement. And with respect to the case, uh, for instance, if the case was three, was three, I can simply return, which means I'm exiting, right? If I'm doing one, I could be, you know, computing, uh, uh, computing prime numbers and, and so forth. Now, again, this code will become much friendlier if I remember that, wait a minute, I have those. I have the primes, right? So I, instead of one, I can use primes. Instead of two, I have the launch thing. And then I also have the exit. So my code becomes much more readable, very user friendly, and so forth. The most important thing to remember inside, inside the switch statement is to use a break statement at the end of each case, uh, including the default. And by the way, using break here isn't helpful because my intent is to return, and return is an alter alternative to break. So if this is the ending of my switch right here, then the break statement takes me out of my switch statement, and so the next statement is executed, the next statement that follows the switch statement. If I, if I did not have a break statement inside my switch, I would fall through cases without breaks. So that if I hit this line and did something over here, if there is no break statement, I just fall through to the next thing right here. So it would result in computing prime numbers and then launching the rocket, right, if there was no break statement. Those type of things, when you fall through cases, fall through individual cases, must be adequately commented because this is, this is somewhat, you know, Sometimes it's an unexpected thing to happen. If you do, um, if you do conclude your cases inside the switch statement with a break statement, then you don't have to comment. That don't have to uh, add any additional comments. Many people believe that the default case, which is like anything else other than the set of cases, such as launch exit and primes, that it has to be at the bottom of the switch statement. That's untrue. It can be really anywhere. It can be right at the top. Right? And it, it is also optional. You don't have to use it uh, inside your switch statement. Let's do this. So you can research. You can play with it. You can start using it. Uh, we will uh, probably pick it up from this point and go back to our official presentation. I appreciate you staying an extra minute or two here, but uh, that's the first introduction for, for the switch statement, which in a way is, in some cases, an alternative to if-else, or else-if, else-if, else-if structure, which gives you a, a, a chance to examine individual conditions and treat them uh, as mutually exclusive conditions, and so, and so you can you can execute code like that. So this gives you similar um, approach, but it has some limitations. And so we will discuss the limitations next week. Next week is uh, Columbus Day, so uh, Tuesday is off the charts. We meet next Thursday, exactly a week from now. Thank you very much.